Hello and welcome to Photo Walkthrough Tutorial 15. Today we're going to be looking at this image that you can see here. Now, this is uh, another image I took up at Maokop Castle. Um, you've seen last week I was showing you some of my more recent images that I took with the pinhole camera. Um, this time, this is an image that I took quite some time ago. And you can see right away why it is that I have uh, uh, not taken the time to post-process this before. Just do the lights out mode there. Um, let's quickly go through what it is that I think uh, are some issues with this image. Uh, first of all, it's very obvious that the foreground is, is badly underexposed. Um, obviously, what I was trying to get was this, uh, this wonderful, uh, colourful sweep of sky here. We've got um, some lovely blues here. We've got these, these beautiful lines in the clouds that I particularly wanted to bring out. And what you can't see here is we've got um, a sort of a yellow sunset. This was taken late in the day, and there's this yellow sunset sort of disappearing down behind the hill there and there was this light flowing over the hill so this light was sort of flowing over the hill down here and you can see in the uh, in the when I was there I could see sort of orangey colored light catching the side of the castle here and just sort of tinting the grass down here as well so that was really what I was aiming for when I took the photograph and as you can see um, I got the exposure wrong uh, and in this case um, it just didn't uh, uh, it didn't expose right, the colours haven't come out well and the foreground hasn't come out well. Now normally I don't spend a lot of time telling you how to make, make photographs that uh, uh, that were taken badly uh, and fix them. Um, and I have had quite a few requests for that. So in this case, I'm going to attempt to fix this photograph and maybe also take it to the next step and also uh, you know, try and make it into something that could go on the wall. So uh, I imagine you've all seen the, the, the picture that promotes this tutorial by now. I hope you'll agree that it's a worthwhile effort. Um, now, let's uh, get back into... Uh, we're in Lightroom here. So uh, the first thing I'm going to want to do is um, just explain how I'm going to do this because... Today I'm going to be using a new tool that we haven't used uh, on the show before. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use um, a product called Light Zone, uh, which we've got a, um, a discount on. I'll have mentioned that um, uh, in one of the surrounding segments. But uh, you can pick up Light Zone, and uh, what I'm going to do with it is use it as an external editor for Lightroom. So the way you do that, let me just quickly show you how to set up Light Zone as an external editor. Um, I'm on the Mac here at the moment, so we're going to the Light Lightroom menu and choose preferences. Um, on the PC it's in the far menu I believe. Um, now in the preferences we've got all these different tab sections. If you go to the external editing tab then we have here at the bottom. By, by default if you've got Photoshop installed your first editor will be set up as whatever version of Photoshop you've got and uh, then you can set up at the bottom a second editor. Uh, and in this case I've set it up as Light Zone. You can choose what what uh, application you want by clicking the Choose button there and on the Mac of course you would browse to the applications and so on and choose Light Zone that way. But these are the bits that I need to tell you about. Um, you can you can edit in TIFF or PSD of course with, with Light Zone not being an Adobe product you're better off using TIFF. Um, you're going to be using uh, as many colors as possible. So Profoto RGB, if you're in 16-bit color depth, um, you want to have a nice big color space. And Profoto RGB is about as big as it gets. So um, Profoto RGB there, and as I mentioned, 16-bit per channel there. That is going to make Light Zone run a little bit slower, but you will get much more color resolution, and it will keep you keep as much data in your image as, as long as possible, and that's always worth doing. And then we've got the option at the bottom here of choosing compression or not for our TIFF files. That just uh, affects the way that the files are stored. It reduces the file space, uh, the, the space it takes on disk just a little bit. So that's how to set up uh, your external editor. Light Zone is just one of the many programs that you could use as an external editor for Photoshop, uh, but that is going to be what we're going to use today. So that's already set up. In this case, I'm now going to go back into Lightroom and I'm going to right click on the image that I want to edit, which is this one. And I'm going to choose, as you can see here, now that it's set up, we've got Edit with Photoshop there, we've got Edit with Light Zone there. So if I press Edit on Light Zone, it's going to pop up this window, which is Edit, in, edit Photo with Light Zone, 
and would I like to edit a copy with Lightroom adjustments and stack it with the original? Uh, that's the only option because at the moment this is a raw file and although Lightzone can open raw files itself, um, it doesn't know how to take uh, adjustments from Lightroom. So what Lightroom is going to do is it's going to turn it into a TIFF file according to the settings that we set in the preferences. Um, a 16-bit TIFF file with Profoto RGB color space and then it's going to open that file with Lightzone. And when it comes back into Lightroom at the end, I would like it to stack the new file with the original. And what it will do is make the new version that uh, we've done some work on, it'll make that the top of the stack. So we'll go ahead and hit Edit on that. And that will now open this file up in Lightzone, which will just take a moment. OK, so here we are in Lightzone, and uh, as you can see, we've got the same image now opened up in Lightzone. Let me just quickly take you around the uh, the interface here. Um, the very first thing uh, that you'll notice is this big space on the right-hand side here. And this is where Lightzone can do very Photoshop-style layers. Uh, we've got all the tools. Instead of having tools in a palette down the left like you do on, Light on Photoshop, we have all of our editing tools here along this line. And... Um, the most famous tool in Lightzone is this Zone Mapper tool here. We've also got Relight tools, Sharpen tools, a Blur tool, that's a Hue Saturation tool, Color Balance, all the basic stuff that you're going to expect, White Balance, Black and White Conversion Layers, and so on. Um, so it's got all the tools that you could use that you could could need, um, and also because the way I'm using it as a as an editor, um, sort of a plug-in to Lightroom. Um, we're not seeing the file browser part of Lightzone, but Lightzone does have its own file organization tools and its own browser, and uh, it's quite a capable editor in its own right. It could be used as a replacement for Lightroom. It happens that, that I use Lightroom as part of my workflow, so I like to use Lightzone just as an external editor, and it works beautifully for that. So, um, so down the right-hand side here is where our layers are going to appear. We've also got some buttons up at the top here. We've got a button that lets us uh, quickly view the original. We've not made any changes, so clicking that's not going to make any difference. Uh, we've also got options for zooming in and zooming out. We've got one-to-one -one mode. We can fit it to screen. And then we've got options up here for cropping, uh, rotation, and we've also got options for doing selective edits. And I'll quickly show you those a little bit later on. You can, in Lightzone, do something that you can't in, in Lightroom version 1. Um, you can make... Uh, edits just to regions of the picture rather than to the whole picture. So let's start off um, by using the tool that uh, Lightzone is most famous for, which is its Zone Mapper. Uh, now what the Zone Mapper does is it allows us to edit the zones in the image. And by default, up here in the, uh, um, the sh small view, what it's doing when we're uh, uh, looking at the picture is showing us uh, the luminosity values for this image. And those luminosity values, as you can see, it's sort of posterizing them. It's uh, You can see some quite clear lines between the brightness values. And the reason it's doing that is it's, it's showing us which lumin luminosity values are in which light zone. And now, uh, those of you that are familiar with the uh, Ansel Adams uh, zone system will probably have already gathered what this is doing. Uh, Ansel Adams himself came up with uh, a system for analyzing the way a picture is going to look and getting it onto a print so that it looks the way you want. Um, he called it his zone system and he was an expert at looking at a scene and just in his, in his mind's eye pre-visualizing what it was that he was looking at and deciding how he wanted it to look in the final print. So he would look at the scene and he would say, OK, well, that bit of sky there is the brightest bit. I want that to be in the brightest zone. And that bit over there is in the darkest bit. I want that to be in the darkest zone. And he set up a system with 11 zones. So uh, five was bang in the middle. Um, in this case, what Light Zone does is it doesn't take the same number of zones. It actually does two zones for every one of Ans Adams. So these are sort of half zone lines. And so you can see as I drag up and down, my mouse is moving nice and smoothly, and you can see just to the left of my pointer uh, another little pointer snapping along these lines. And as I move along, you can see it's highlighting in this image up here the regions of the image that are in the zone that I'm mousing over. So we can see, for example, that the brightest parts of the castle are down here, which is sort of two-thirds of the way up the, up the, the tonality uh, uh, gradient here. Um, and the darkest parts of our sky are at the side here, about a third of the way down. Which means there isn't much in that middle section here. And this is telling us what we already know, which is that everything that's in the ground and the castle is in the bottom third, and everything that's in the sky is in the top third, and there's not much in the middle. 
So what we're going to do is we are going to attempt to drag some of those values closer together. Uh, now I've done quite a lot of messing around with uh, LightZone and I, I find this tool extremely useful. And here's how I found it, uh, it, it best serves me. Um, one of the things I'm going to do is I'm just going to see if there are any zones that are largely unused. And I can see that right up the top here, there are there's not much. I mean, down down on this second line here, um, we've got a bit of that brightest sky at the top there. But at this top line, we haven't got very much. So the first thing I can do is just click on that line and drag it up and make that brighter. And just shrink that top zone where there's almost nothing in it. And as you saw, I can turn this layer on and off. As you saw, that's going to brighten the whole image because what it does when I drag that top zone up is it, it sort of pulls all the other zones up as well. It sort of spreads them out a little bit and uh, pulls them all brighter. Um, so that's that's what we're doing here is just maximizing our available uh, our available tonality. Um, now, uh, I'm going to come down here and see, look, right, right here at the bottom there's just a couple of little spots that are in that bottom zone. So in the same way, I can click on that and I can drag that down a little bit and just just pull that a little bit more, stretch that bottom part of the the, the uh, tonality tree a little bit wider as well. Uh, and the next thing I'm going to do is I am going to look for sort of a middle point. And this is a, a reasonable way of, of sort of approaching these things. Uh, a middle point is probably around about there. Um, and what I'm going to do is is just sort of lock that and I can now stretch the values in the sky by just clicking one of the middle values in the sky and drag that down. Now let's just quickly look at what that's done. That's that's given a little bit more definition in the clouds. We've we've stretched the values out in the sky there. And um we've we've sort of uh, left because I I anchored the midpoint here. Just look at the ground while I turn this layer on and off. You can see it's not really changing the ground much at all because I anchored the midpoint. Um, so that's helping our sky, but it isn't helping our ground very much at all. So let's let's get rid of those and, and approach this from the other angle. Let's let's look at the ground and try bringing that brighter and then approach the sky. So if I click that there and just bring that up to maybe there-ish. Now we can see that is immediately bringing out a load of detail in the ground. What it's doing is stretching out all those bottom tonal values uh, and spreading them over a larger area of our... Of our so essentially this is, uh, on the right here we've got our input values and on the left we've got our output values and what we said is all that stuff that was dark I want it to come out a lot brighter up here. And so having having added a lot to our, to our uh, lower tones and I'm just going to that that one that I put in the bottom there. I'm going to just let that. I'm going to get rid of that line I put on because I'm finding it was taking out too much detail in the ground here. Um, having done the the castle first, which is where we needed to do most of the work, I'm now going to grab uh, something from the sky and just see if I can bring a little bit more definition. I think I may have grabbed too low a line there. Let's get rid of that. Try again and just see if I can put a little bit more definition into the sky. Let's see how that looks. Okay, that's not bad at all. Now that's that's the zone mapper way of doing it, um, which is which is working pretty well. But what I'm going to do, we've got a, a, an opacity slider here. I'm going to drag the opacity of that down. So we're using a bit of what I've done there, but it was um, it, it's tricky doing that sort of stuff by hand, uh, and I'm going to end up breaking my tones. Uh, if I really push these around a long, long way, like I am doing here, so I'm just toning down that edit. And let's use the next tool along. Now this was uh, one of the more recently added tools in, in LightZone, I believe. Uh, it's the Relight tool. So if I click on that, it's going to add another layer here. Um, layers, as they do in Photoshop, go from bottom to top. Um, but in Photoshop you don't have all this extra detail here like you do in LightZone. So if you twiddle these little triangles, you can open and close the settings on that particular tool. So here in the Relight tool, this is essentially um, a, an editable, um, you know, you can go back and tweak it again if you do, if you later on if you make changes you can go back and tweak it again. Unlike in Photoshop with the shadows and highlights tool, so this is a posh shadows and highlights tool, a very very posh shadows and highlights tool. Um, so let's start off. Uh, you can see right at the top we've got a shadows slider, and that of course is brightening all the the darker parts of the image. It is it is affecting the sky as well. Um, it just it just uh, forces the 
the majority of the edits is doing into the the darker parts of the image. So if I if I, if I tweak my shadows, I, I I don't want to tweak them too far because I don't want to break the tonality of the image. So I'm thinking somewhere around about there maybe. Uh, if I just drag the highlights up and down, you can see that that is dimming down the highlights which is just bringing obviously as we, if we dim the highlights which is the sky and we brighten the shadows what we're doing is bringing the two halves of the picture closer together so I do want to do a little bit of that um, but I don't want to darken the image too much so I'm, I'm going to just do the very lightest of highlights tweaks and do most of the work in the shadows Photo Walkthrough is a free online video show about photography and digital photo editing using Photoshop and Lightroom. Join the Photo Walkthrough community, find all the old shows, and subscribe to the new ones for free at photowalkthrough.com.